Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Good. Yeah, CMG. Geez, I'm, I'm calling gaps ahead of the, before they even gap now. It's working. And Netflix. Okay, great. I'll be back in a minute. And welcome. This is online at Crater Central. We want to welcome each and every one of you to the presentation today. Let's get the percussion section ready. Okay, and to the trumpet. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, you know at the sound of the trumpets, it's time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome our host presenter today from the Stockswish.com. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and as Kevin said, I own a company called the Stock Swish LLC. Today's a great topic. I'm going to be talking today about how to trade on the side of institutional money, and it is a fantastic topic. And I plopped in the room there, CMG. It is actually gapping up tonight to some huge, huge, massive number. And it's just one of many examples that we can sit here and talk about today. Because institutions are buying that stock right now at 4.33 Eastern Time, CMG is actually getting bought. It is getting bought, and the stock is getting a huge, massive lift up. And how is that happening? By institutional buying. So welcome. Welcome. I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. If you're interested in more information, feel free to go to my website, www.thestockswoosh.com. And if you'd like more information after today's lecture, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com as well. I have a ton of videos on YouTube, and you can go like me at Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Skype. So today's topic is going to be about trading on the side of what is institutional power, okay? And if you're, if you're thinking about trading and you're here right now today to listen to me talk and you've never traded the market before, great. If you have already traded the market and you're currently a trader, great. This is for anyone because it's an interesting topic because a lot of people that even are trading right now or want to trade or are thinking about trading wonder, well, how do stocks and how does the market move? And how can they become successful as a trader? Becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist. A specialist in what? in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. So you know where the stock is going to go, up or down. 
com comprehending how to read this, this power, okay? Define and train with the power of institutions will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. Because that's how you're going to make money. You're going to make money when you get in before the big move has taken place. And I have devised a way to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market when they step in. And like I was just talking about CMG, they're stepping in right now into that stock and it's getting bought. And this is how it is possible for one individual to become successful in the market and also to become wealthy. If that's really the reason you're trading or why you want to trade, I don't know. You have to do know. You have to be in touch with yourself. You need to know why you're doing this or why you want to do it if you're going to go down that road. If you are trading on the side of institutional money, all you need to do is ride the coattails of the institutional moves and just go with them, flow with them. Flowing with the power and not against it. So, so important. And if you do that, you will produce consistent and large winning trades for yourself. If you want to make millions of dollars, if this is really why you're trading, you're saying, you know what, I want to do this because I want to become rich, then you have got to be with the side of power. You've got to know how to read it. You have to know how to be with it. It's the only way that you can really make millions of dollars okay, in the market, if this is what you want to do. And for some people do and some people don't, but I do think you need to be in touch with that. Now, what do I mean? I'm talking about trading with power. It's about knowing how to read what institutional money looks like. It's essential to becoming a su successful trader. You can win big trading on the side of power, even as one person. So ask yourself, as I was just saying, why are you doing this? Why are you trading? Why are you thinking about trading? And not only that, how much money do you want to make trading? Right now, plus your goals in the future. Do you want to make a little or do you want to make a lot? You know, I think if you're doing this, the idea of making a lot is very exciting. I wouldn't be doing this to make a little. I always wanted to make a lot. Trading on the side of institutional money is the only way to make consistent real money in the market. Otherwise, you'll get run over or jostled around and basically end up nowhere. And after commissions and trading costs and room costs and everything else, you're down. So you don't want to get run over. You want to do the right thing. You want to learn how to trade correctly, and this is what we're here to talk about today. So really, why trade the market at all? Number one reason is for a career choice. It, you, you can trade from home. You don't have to commute to your job every day. You don't have to deal with traffic. You don't have to give yourself you know, a two-hour cushion to get ready in the morning plus commute to work. It's a great career choice, and specifically in the summer because the weather is beautiful right now, and you're done every day you know, by lunchtime or early afternoon. You don't have to beat the traffic, fight the traffic, and miss the great part of the day in the summer. Also, why trade the market at all? Because of the unlimited income potential. A lot of people are in jobs right now where they're not getting uh, credible raises, or they're losing their bonuses, or not getting overtime. You do have an unlimited income potential to trade the market if you learn how to do it. It's not like you're stuck. It's not like you get up and you say, okay, mister, this is your salary here. You're going to make $50,000 this year and next year and the next year after that. No. The better you are as a trader, the more you can make. The better you become, the more you risk. There's an unlimited, unlimited income potential to the market. So you have a lot to look forward to once you learn how to trade well. A lot of people, you know, are in positions though right now in their jobs and their careers where they're dreaming about stuff that they can have, currently can't afford, and have no way how they're going to be able to have ever afford these things unless they get a second job or devote an extra 20, 30 hours a week to a second job or a part-time job, which they just don't have. They just don't have it. Many people are crunched with their time now between family obligations, personal obligations, your full-time career. There's not much time left in the day. Okay, there's a lot of expectations being had on people nowadays, and this is why a lot of people are stressed the heck out. You got to pull yourself back and kind of reevaluate if that's where you're at right now. This is a good lecture to sit and think about this because you want to be able to buy more things for yourself and have more things you desire and not feel like you're never going to be able to get them because you don't have the time to take on another job or do something where you can make more money because you can. You could learn how to trade. All right. And not only can you buy more things when you make more money, if you can learn how to trade the market because of the unlimited income potential, you can also have a career where you work less hours and have less stress. Number one, because you're not commuting, you're working from home. That immediately takes off a lot of stress for people. You can sleep in bed longer in the day because you don't have to worry about having that cushion of time where you have to travel to your job. And you're home earlier too, obviously, because you didn't leave the house. And you go out and do stuff in the afternoon like golf or go to the pool. 
So if you want to make it happen, if you really want to do this, you got to take it seriously, and that means looking at the bigger picture. If you have any of these dreams about trading the market or more, then you have to look at the bigger picture of how to make these dreams a reality for yourself, which is working less hours and making more money and less stress. And in the bigger picture, it's important to see the power in stocks and the market as a force. And that's, how, that's the best way I would describe it. Stocks in the market have loads of power, loads of power, loads of momentum, and the potential and the money behind them. Now, when people say, well, do you respect the market? A lot of everybody talks about this. You hear people talk about this all the time. Lectures on the internet, TV, it's all over the place. Books written about this. The QQQs are a great example of this right now because the QQQs are the ETFs of the market and they're bullish, okay? People keep thinking this market's extended. It's not. And I keep saying it's not and it keeps going higher and I keep reading it correctly. The real respect, when I say respect for the market, what I mean, what I'm thinking, what I'm talking about is respect for the money. It's respect for the money. That's what I, that's what it is. That's the translation for me. That's when I say respect this, respect this bullish trend in this market, I'm saying respect the money here, the power of the money, okay? I don't know what other people mean when they say that, but for me, it's respect for the money. And if you have respect for huge, huge, huge amounts of money, you will trade it correctly and consider your trades correctly and give them the due weight and consideration without trading willy-nilly. So here's an example of a gap. Now, this was last week. The stock actually closed the night before at 2150. Now, talking about the power of institutions and the power of money, the stock opened the next day at a crazy low price from where it closed the prior day. All right? It opened down at 15 something. So the stock got clobbered overnight in what is called a gap. This is called a gap. We're going to talk about these later today. But here's an example of an institutional move moving the stock down. Now, a lot of people bought this stock on the day. And if you bought this stock on this day of this gap, you actually made money as a long. I did not. I did not because I respect the power of the institution and I know the stock is lower. People are still going to buy this. People are still going to buy this and think that it fills the gap and this is not going to fill the gap. Okay? It's not going to fill the gap at all and we're going to talk about that more later too. So the power of institutions, what do I mean? How much? What am I talking about when I'm talking about money? and institutions, what do I mean by power and institutional power? Is it millions or is it billions? Love this picture here. It's billions. It's billions and billions and billions and billions of billions. It's a heck of a lot. And so it's more than millions, which is really why as one individual trading the market with your money, unless you too have billions and are trading billions, in your positions, you have to respect what's there in the market, in the stocks, in the market that you're trading. And how do you do this? You have to look and see who is in charge. So you're trying to read what is the power, okay? Here is a gap. This is BBBY. That's the chart that I clipped here. Who is in charge of this stock? The bulls or the bears? The bears are actually in charge of the stock. And yet, many people are long this stock. Who do I mean by the people? Do I mean the people that have billions? Or do I mean the people that have not billions? Traders are long, BBBY, okay? And it's not a good long. It is actually a short. In fact, it's a great short. The power in this chart is the bears. The bears. This chart, this stock is lower, okay? And how do I know this? Because I know how to read directional bias. And this is what we're going to talk about more today. And I know how to read that because I know how to read what institutions are doing in stocks. And traders bought this. And it's not a good buy. And a lot of people are going to lose their shirts in this stock at some point, whenever, whenever it does whatever it wants to do. Whenever the billions, the trader, the institutions that have billions in here, want to get out of this more, or short it even, okay, in this chart. Who's the side of the power in this stock? I actually ended up playing this two days in the last week. I played this today. It's Matt. And I played it last week on Thursday. Again, another beautiful, fabulous chart that shows the 
institutional power to the side of the bears. This chart is a short. And I think a lot of traders didn't do this trade today or even the day back here at the gap because the stock, if you look at it here, was down, traded down two days, closed at 39 something, gap down the next day at 37 something, and ran down three days since. And a lot of traders don't know how to read this and don't know what to do with this and think that this is actually a good long, but it's not. It's a short. It was a short. It is a short. I've been making money shorting this. I've traded this, made money shorting this twice in the last week. Good money in total on the stock, just in three days. Okay? So you have to look up the side of the power, the side of the institutional power, okay? Which in the case of Matt is bearish, just like the BBY. So it's reading the footprints of an institution which stomp on a stock, just like it's happening right now live in CMG. If you go look at the stock right now, it's rallied up, was up $40 since the close price of today, the last time I looked at it before I started talking, okay? That is a great example of a footprint of an institution that's happening in that chart right now. That stock will gap up tomorrow morning at 9.30 when the market closes, I mean opens. Here's another example of a chart, Netflix. I'm not sure where this is at right now, but this was reporting tonight and was gapping up too. Another one where you're reading the footprint. A lot of people were short Netflix down in here. Now, it did have a move down in here, but Netflix footprint was bullish, not bearish. And it's a beautiful, beautiful bullish chart. The stock made several lower lows and lower highs all along the way in here in the month of March, April, and into the beginning of May. And people were short this stock. And it actually had a bullish gap up that failed to go higher back here in the last earnings report, which was the middle of April. And a lot of people thought this was a short, but it wasn't a short. It was a long. The footprint in Netflix is bullish. And it's a nice chart. It's a nice chart to the upside, not to the downside. So how can I tell this in these charts that I've been showing you? How can I tell the direction for these? How am I reading them when they're making all these pivot breaks and then you think that they're going in the opposite direction, but they're not then? How am I figuring it out? Because I have a method to determine what a real directional bias is for a chart. I've devised a method. I've designed a method to find stocks to trade that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day big moves on the day, early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 into the open, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. It's the 26 point method. That's how I determine what a stock is going to do. I go up, I get up in the morning and I actually look at the stock and see what price it's gapping at in the pre-market to determine what the directional bias is for the move of the stock on the day. It's a checklist. It's called the Golden Gap Rating System, a 26-point checklist. It tells me what is the stock going to do today? Who is in control of this chart? Is it bullish? Is it bearish? Who is going to buy it? Who is going to sell it? Who is going to short it? So I'm looking at the gap, and what is that telling me? The gaps in these stocks, as they're gapping in the after hours and in the morning pre-market, are telling me what the institutions are actually doing with the stocks. Because gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap in the first place. You and I couldn't move CMG up. We all bought it here. We couldn't move that stock up $40 in, in the last. It actually it happened in like less than 15 minutes. We couldn't have done that, okay? Institutional money did that. And again, how much? Millions? No, billions. That's what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it. You take the trade in it, in the right direction. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. We got to do something here. We got to buy it now. What are we going to do? Short it, sell it, what? And an action is being forced by participants of the stock, meaning people that are long or short it. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful and why you can make money doing this as one individual trader, even if you don't have millions or billions of dollars behind you. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. So I've been talking about gaps. I'm going to just basically go over here for those of you that are new to gaps. What is a gap? Gap is a strategy. 
My strategy is called golden gaps. They are really qualifying professional gaps. A professional gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. So if a stock is gapping up, like CMG tonight, that is a professional bullish gap. It is called a professional gap because professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap. So again, going back to the example of CMG tonight, that stock is being bought by professionals. They're making the stock gap up. Okay. In the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock was higher in the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap, professionals are selling and are shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock was lower in the trading day. I prefer bearish gaps. For those of you that don't know me, I like to short a lot. Gaps that gap down have two things happening in them to create the gap. Number one, they have shorting, and they also have selling. So I like to have both those actions. When you're buying, you really only have buying. Therefore, I have double the potential for a move. Okay, so I really like to short. I think there's a lot of potential for traders to make money into the short side. So the strategy that I'm talk, going to talk to you about today is a strategy that directs you to trade on the side of big money. And you want to be on it because it's powerful. It's something that you should respect in your trades. And when you choose to trade against it, know that you do not have a high odds of success. That your longevity as a trader is short-lived. And the idea of being able to actually get to the point where you can make 100 grand, 250 grand, or millions of dollars a year in the trader is less likely if you are not trading in the correct direction of power. Okay? Because one trade could take you out if you're against who is actually in the stock and who's controlling it. And this is why it's so important to read this right. In the end, my whole philosophy of everything when I make a trading decision and everything that I teach people, and it is so important, is you got to have a set of principles. Call it a strategy, call it whatever you want. It's really a set of principles that I aspire to and teach people to and I respect. What are the underlying principles behind why you're taking a trade? Why are you taking a trade? What is the reason? What is the framework for buying something or selling something or shorting something? Having a checklist is like your own set of principles where you can follow. It's a set of rules, and it's a blueprint to follow the stock correctly. Someone asked me about something today. I forget what the stock was about buying uh, something that was bottoming out. I said, there's no strategy there. Buying a double bottom, There, what's the strategy? There's no strategy there. There's no. You could not go in front of a board of directors at a hedge fund, or at a company, explain and describe what the strategy is, the reason that those people should support your trade and take a big position in it. You couldn't do it. Whereas I could go in front of anyone, anyone on the planet, and explain why I'm doing something, okay? And it would be based on a principle that would make sense, okay? Because it's with the power of money. And I'm seeing it in what? I'm seeing it in the gap, okay? So what my focus is is gaps. And my point is that it's, it's very important to have a focus, I talked about this in a trading room, it was a couple of weeks ago, and I thought this would be good to go over this in a webinar. People say to me, well, why do you only do this one strategy? Why do you only do gaps? Why don't you do the reversals? Why, when you see that a gap is going, going to go in the opposite direction, which I can sometimes do, I see that it's going to do the opposite of what I want it to do. I may see it in a gap. I may see it in the open. They said, well, why don't you do the reversal then? Why don't you do it? It's, it's money. You could do it. You could take it in the opposite direction. If you see it, if you see that it's not going to work in the direction you see, yeah, that's true. That's true. I could. I could do both. I could do the actual trains that set up right, and I could play on the failures in the opposite direction because I can read them. But guess what? My eye would not be trained in the matter that I have trained my eye. In fact, I was just talking about, here, this is a perfect point I was trying to make earlier. Before I go on and explain the circles. I'm calling gaps before they happen. Now, I'm not in the trades. Some people in my room are doing options in my calls, okay? How am I able to read the gap, know the direction of it in the pre and post market, and now even take it to a higher level where I'm actually predicting the gap to even happen, whether up or down. Because I have trained my brain and I've trained my eye in a certain manner that looks at something over and over and over and over and over and over and over again where I've trained myself so much because I'm only doing one thing that I've gotten this good. And you can do that too. How? you got to train yourself to look at it right. And most people don't do this. That's one of the reasons there's a high level of failure 
in day traders because they want to jump from thing to thing to thing and do different stuff every day in both directions and they want to do the reversals and they want to do the regular ones, they want to do everything and then they never get as good at me as actually seeing stuff before it even happens. And the market's a good example actually. I think it's one of the reasons I read the market so well. Now let's go over the circles. This is Trader A. Trader A gets up in the morning, he looks at what's out there, and he sees something that he wants to do that day and he does it. And here we have a green circle. Okay, this is Trader A. Then he gets up the next day, it's Monday, it's Tuesday. Trader A gets up on Tuesday, He's trying to find something to do. He's trying to find something to do. He's, trying, he's like, oh, I think I'll do this today. And then he does this, okay? So here he did one strategy Monday. He did a second strategy on Tuesday. And he's going to have varying results. Then he gets up on Wednesday. Wednesday, he does a completely different strategy. And we have the blue circle on the Wednesday, okay? One day he bought a gap. One day he did a reversal. One day he did a buy setup. Next day, did the market every day. Trader A does something different. Okay? Then we have Trader B. Okay, this is me. I get up and I look for what I want and I play it. Monday. Tuesday, I get up and look for what I want and I play it. Wednesday, I get up and look for what I want and I play it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay? If you were a person that was trying to predict what Trader A was doing, you wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. The next circle could be yellow, it could be red, it could be pink, it could be purple, it could be green, it could be orange. You have, you, there's there's going to be a lot of different circles in here, okay? You're not going to be able to predict with 100% certainty in here what this trader is going to do. Whereas this trader not only knows what the trader is going to do, the tr this trader here has trained themselves to know what to look for, to know what to do. This trader gets confused. And you know what happens here with this trader's confusion? Some days he's up, some days he's down, some days he's up, some days he's down. He never gets the trained eye. He also never gets that level of conviction. He never gets to the point where he actually can have conviction or a trained eye enough to take real risk in anything that he trades. Because he's doing so many different things all along the way because he has to have something every day and he's not sure exactly what to focus on and what he chooses to focus on in any given day or the reason that he chooses to focus on it even varies. One day he might watch something he likes in the news. Next day he'll go in a different trading room. Then he'll see something on the internet. Then maybe he'll do something he likes on his own. The reasons he's even doing or picking from thing to thing each day will vary even on the day by the choice that he makes. It's not even that, he can't, he doesn't even do that where he's going into the same trading room every day and deciding what to do. He is all over the place. And this is most people that trade the market that are day traders or swing traders or core traders unless they're a professional. If you had money, if you had millions of dollars, if you had billions of dollars, would you give your money to Trader A or would you give your money to Trader B? You would give your money to Trader B because Trader B is reliable, consistent. You know exactly what they're looking for. You know they know what they're doing and you know they have confidence and conviction and you know that they are so disciplined and strategic in what they choose to do and this person is all over the place. And guess what? The results reflect that. Their P&L reflects that. Their P&L reflects that they're all over the place and they're not focused. Now, one of the reasons this trader does so well here at Trader B, and one of the reasons this trader is able to stay on the same thing and have conviction and make money and do it is because this trader is trading on the side of institutional power. So there's no reason that this trader should look for anything else because if it isn't there, the trader may not trade that day. If the trader gets up on some day and doesn't see it, then they don't do anything at all. They don't flip it. Okay, or if it's not there, they do nothing. Then this trader has better results. Less losses, makes more money, and can take more risk. This trader is jumping all over the place. Some days may risk 50 bucks a trade. Some days may risk 100. Some days doesn't put a stop in and ends up losing $250 on a trade he only meant to lose 75. This trader will be up in a trade and kill it and only make five pennies when it's going well. This trader will hold it on through. Let the big trade ride out and make the real money. This trader is a career trader and this trader is not. He's somebody trying to make it and he's all over the place and can't figure it out. And he doesn't know what to do and he doesn't know why. This trader knows why, sticks with this because there's a reason, there's a strategic reason behind it, okay? There's a basis for doing it. 
There's a real reason for taking the trades. You see the difference? This is important to understand. One last thing and then I'm going to move off of this. Trading, okay, when you trade and you make correct trading decisions, you got to read price right. And if you are in something long and short the same stock on the same day or different days or all over the place in different stocks long and short doing failures and reversals and taking them sometimes in the right direction, okay, you never get to the point that your brain actually maps out intrinsically, intuitively, the right thing to do that when you're trading live on the day, if you're a day trader, now this is not this is not the case if you're a swing trader or core trader, but if you're a day trader, that you would actually be able to make a decision, make a decision seeing something. You'd be able to see something to make the decision to press the button and take the trade. And by the time you think it through and analyze it and think about it, the trade is gone. This trader has to analyze and think a lot. This trader does not trade the open, which is what I trade. This trader has to make sure everything's situated after 10 o'clock and often misses 75% of the moves that the stocks make into the open, okay? Because he has to think and he needs a million pieces of confirmation. I get my confirmation. I know what to look for. I don't need 25 confirmations. I need to see it and I get the confirmation and I do it. This trader needs a lot here and he's never going to get what he really, really wants because what he really needs to do is a focus and he doesn't have it. You see the difference? This comes from training yourself. Does anyone have any questions about the point I'm trying to make here before I go on to a different topic? No one's asked any questions. Can everybody hear me? No one's asked any questions at all. <laughs> Kathy can hear me. Kathy's like, teach me how to make a red circle. All right. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that there is less losses with focus, okay? There's less losses with focus. And also, when you focus, it takes away the anxiety of what direction to enter trade. And then you get something called conviction, which I have when I trade. I have conviction when I trade that it's going to, when I take the trade, that it's going to work. If you're in fear or anxiety about whether or not you're taking something in the right direction, then you're not going to trade it well, and you're not going to be able to take any risk. And if you do take any sizable risk, you'll kill it. You'll kill it with a, with a loss or a gain that's small, meaning you could just let the trade ride out. You might have a great trade, but you kill it too soon because you don't really have conviction in it. Now let's talk about this mat. I did bring up this chart earlier. Like I said, I did this today. I did this today, and I also did it last week on Thursday. Beautiful, short in here on the mat. This was Thursday. Now I was talking about gaps of stock gap. Did it close the night before up here at 38 something? Gap down the next day here at 37 something. This is a $2 gap down. Nice gap on mat, and it also had a really good move on the day on Thursday as a day trade. It also followed through and had continuation. You could have shorted this Friday too, and you could have shorted this today. Okay? The stock has had good entries to take into short. How did I know that Matt was a short on Thursday? How did I know that Matt was a short on today, on Monday? Because I'm reading the gap. I'm reading the price of the gap, and I'm reading the institutional gap here, and I'm saying the institutions are going to sell out of this stock. Now, if I had rated the gap per my 26-point rating system and it didn't rate good, then guess what? It probably would have gotten bought. Again, I don't flip them, but I can read failures then when I rate my gaps. If they don't rate per the system, then I know I can't short it or buy it if it's a bullish gap. Okay? So here was the trade. This is on a one-minute chart. I'm on a one-minute chart. Here the stock open, dropped, rally back up. Here's a short in mat. You actually could have been in this for a bigger target, but the morning short, I like to be in the morning uh, to get the morning move in this. The morning short in mat happened literally in less than an hour, although you could have played this all day. I actually did trade this stock all day. That's highly unusual for me. But if you want to just do the morning short, here it was, and here was the play. Entry price was 37.10. Risk is 20 cents. So your risk is 20 cents. You can risk as much as you want dollar for dollar, but the stop has to be where the stop has to be. If you're taking an advanced risk of $600, that means you would have, could have taken a position size of 3,000 shares in MAT. 
exit, this is the morning exit, not the afternoon exit, which I played all day. But the morning exit was 36.15. Total profit, if you had gotten out of the whole thing into the drop, 28.50. Risk to reward on this is 4.7 times the amount risk was made in profit. So you would have turned $600 into $28.50. This is a good risk to reward. That means for every dollar you risk, you made almost five in this trade. How are you able to do this? Because an institution sold out of the stock, made that gap, pushed it down in the day, and you knew to take the short at a very early time frame here. This is an extremely early time frame here to get in the stock. The stock's only been trading for five minutes on the day, less than that. And you're taking the position, okay? This is all the confirmation that I need. Why? Because I'm reading the gap, and I'm reading the gap. Now, I put the buying power required down here for everybody. A little over 100000 in BP. This does not mean you needed 100. $111,300, it means you would have needed this in buying power to take a 3,000 share position in this stock at the strike price, okay? Would have been less today, actually. However, this is the buying power the broker gives you based on leverage, okay? So it's important to note that. And leverage is a great thing if you know how to trade because you don't need this dollar for dollar. Can you imagine if you need a dollar for dollar in something like CMG at a price point of five, $600? Okay, so brokers are great when they give you leverage. I use stocks and I control my risk by determining how much I want to risk per the money and then that sets my share size, okay? Now, I did the mat today too and I have to say that it reminded me when I did, when I did the mat again today that shorting is really great for day trading profits. Shorting seems to happen so fast in the morning when it happens. They set up so quickly. There's a panic that comes into shorts that allows you to book money so fast in the morning, usually in the first 15 to 30 minutes. And if you want to hold the trade all day longer, you can. That's up to you. I think you should lower the stop if you're in it longer. But what I love about day trading in reference to shorts is that sometimes you'll get trades, and Matt was one of them even today. Let me go back to this. I, I, I don't think any trading rooms out there called this mat today as a short but mine. Okay, this is a very tough call here to read unless you know how to read this chart. It was a short though, and it had a nice concentrated selling action all day. And it was selling, 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 not shorting, really mostly selling. And then some traders that were shorted, but not a lot. And the great thing about doing shorts in the framework of institutional power is if a lot of traders won't do some of these things I'm doing. So you don't get the pushback. So you can aggressively hit it, okay? You can aggressively hit it because the selling action is going to come in and it's going to be clean. What I mean by clean, I mean it just bleeds on down. I personally do not do anything else but day trade equities. Charles is asking a question. Can you do this with call and put options? I personally don't. But I have people that I've trained that have done my class that are doing other things in stocks because they're rating the gap. They're rating the gap using the 26-point rating system. It's telling them the directional bias for the stock, and then they're choosing to do it in a different format than taking the equity trade. They may, some people are doing swing trades. Some people don't have the day trading buying power to do day trades, so they're doing overnights in the swing trades, which they're in for five to seven days. Some people are doing options, okay? Me, personally, though, I'm only doing the equity trade. But yes, I have people that are doing that. And I even have people that are doing the calls that I'm making to actually say that, you know, I see something that's going to gap, like the one like the one tonight in CMG. And that's on you to do the option. You learn the directional bias from me, which you would learn. However, I found that a lot of people actually do still like to do the day trades. Like, people are doing other stuff, but they're also doing the day trades with me. Because you can make a lot of money day trading. And then it's there right there, right there, right now in the equity trading. Now, who made Matt fall today? Regular traders? No. No, they didn't. This is the perfect example today, and I was talking about it in the live room, where it was being sold off by institutions. There was, there was no traders were selling that today. None. Okay? And it bled and bled, and it was a really clean, nice, beautiful, pretty short into the afternoon. Okay? And it's just a great example where if you're in something and it's just continuing and continuing, you just stay with it. Easy money. You got to get the stock right. You got to get the direction right. You've got to get the entry right. You have to size yourself right. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things you have to be right, but once you learn, you can do it. Now, let's look at another one here. Again, beautiful follow through, beautiful continuation. Charles could have done an option in this. I don't know how it would have 
uh, played out for you as far as the pricing. But look at this one. GTOT, another gap down here. This was the beginning of July, right after the holiday. Stock had a beautiful move here. Continued down. Boop, boop, boop. From the time that the stock gap down here at 18, this was just, actually this was last week when I clipped this year. I'm not sure where it's at exactly today, but it came all the way down to 14. Show the stock move $4 from here. Beautiful trade. Okay. And on the day, this is the live day. This is a daily chart. It had a really good move in it too as a day trade. Now this is a five minute chart. You can do a one minute chart. You could have played the morning in the GTAT here in the one minute, or you could have done the five minute and been in and all the way down into the bigger move. Here was a setup in GTAT. Boom, boom, boom. Slid on down. You can count the green bars in the stock. This is a five minute chart on the day. You could actually count the green bars in this. That's how little there is. What a nice selling action in this stock. Price is $17.43, risk was $0.32, cents, and that's how you're sizing yourself. On 2,000 shares, $640 risk. Again, this is advanced. Got to learn how to do it before you can take this risk. Exit $16.50. Total profit, if you held this to the full target, was $18.60. Almost a three-hour trade. It's a nice, solid trade. Again, beautiful move. Buying power for this one wasn't that much. Less than $35,000 to take 2,000 shares. Okay. Actually, this is a big stop for this, but it's on a five-minute chart. Nice trade, though. Now, a lot of people say, well, how much money can you make trading gaps? Can you actually do this? Is it something you can do for a career? Can you pay your bills with this? You know, everyone lives in a different place as far as their economical standing. Some people have very high expectations of where they live. They, they have very expensive uh, homes and rents. And some people have very modest means and they don't need to make millions of dollars trading. So it's up to you what you want to make. You need to know your goal, but it will equate to your risk. There's three levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. If you want to take an advanced risk, you certainly can make a living trading gaps. And by that, I mean six figures a year or more. How much over that benchmark you make depends on how well you personally trade, meaning do you hold the trade to the bigger target? Do you do the ads? Do you size yourself correctly? If you're going to allow yourself a five, six hundred dollar risk and you need to take it in every trade that you take, if you don't and you miss size yourself and only risk a hundred, two hundred bucks when you allow yourself five or six, you know, you're going to be short of that mark. So you have to know what your goals are and you have to be willing to take the risk to make the money to get to the advanced level. Start out at the beginner risk. This is what I tell people. Get good at doing that. Build the conviction within yourself. And you also have to have the cash to do it. But as I showed you, I mean, even the advanced risks in these examples here and many, many that I could show you are right around that $100,000 BP mark. I think with 100,000 BP, and if you have more, great. But right around that mark, you could take an advanced risk of buying power and, and do well and do exceptionally well if you knew how to trade, if you knew how to pick the stocks and if you knew how to do the entries. Now, I'm going to talk here about the Golden Gap for beginners because many people are starting out. They're brand new. They don't know where to start. I'd say start in a demo first. Start in a demo and then take smaller risk. Exact same play in GTAT. That guy here, he decided to do it as well. He could not risk $600 plus. He just, he just did the class. So he's being normal. He's risked $64 in the train. Same exact trade, entry, stop, exit everything, and made $186, bucks, and that's good. To risk $64 and make $186 is darn, darn good, okay? One minute he had $64, the next minute he only had almost a $200. And if he lost, he only lost $64. And so he let the trade play out. You got to let the trade play out. If you want to count as soon as you take it, your risk is too much. Look at the buying power he needed for this. $3,486, less than 3500 Very doable. Very, very, very doable. And guess what? This guy doesn't even need a day trading account for an overnight. He could have an account with this much buying power, and he could have stayed in this trade down to 14 In fact, let's figure out. If this trader didn't day trade and just did the swing trade, 1743 minus 14 if he took 200 shares of it as a swing trade, he made 686 bucks, risking $64. That swing trade in this was a 10-hour trade. That means he was $64 and he would have made 686 bucks. This is somebody, if they don't have a pattern day trading account, you could swing trade it. Okay? Nice follow through. How are you doing it? You're reading the gap. You're reading the gap. You're correctly reading the side of the money. You are correctly reading price, which you absolutely must do in order to trade right. 
And you know what I find people do? Instead of doing a trade like this in the GTOT for an overnight, you know what they do? They'll buy something like that RP. They'll buy something like BBBY. It's the wrong thing to do. And then they'll get hurt in one of those trades at some point because they will hurt you. You have to learn how to read directional bias correctly to make money. Not just today, next week, next month, next year, over the long haul. And again, like I've been talking about, you really got to look at the bigger picture, which is to trade a system that can read the side of institutional power. How am I successful as a day trader when many people fail? Because I read institutional power. How am I able to teach people how to do this? And how are people that I'm teaching able to actually do it and make money? Because what I'm teaching them works. It works because the stocks are moving in the right direction where we're taking the trades. So the system that I teach is called the Golden Gap System. The Golden Gap System is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. How will you get there? How will you get to the point that you want to be? You've got to learn how to trade on the side of institutional money, learn how to read power money in a chart, okay, which is billions, not just millions. Learn how to read the trend, learn how to read price, and learn a system and method that teaches you all of the above and more, which, which you'll get from me. In the end, you've got to focus on the right information if you want to do this for a career. Even if it's a part-time career, you've got to take it seriously. The right information to focus on in charts is price, and that's how you make money as a trader. Whether you do it part-time or full-time, whether you do it for 20 minutes a day or 8 hours a day, getting at the right price, getting out of the right price is the way to make it. And gaps show you price at an advanced level, which allows a trader, like you, to predict the move the stock will make before it does it. I'm, I'm very good at doing that. I'm doing it before the market even opens. The most valuable information for people to trade can be found in reading price action in gaps. And I don't think people understand that. I just don't think people get it. In fact, I did a video today when I was reading the market. I said, I just don't think people get it. I don't think people get how important gaps are in price in understanding price and reading price, even if you don't want to play them as day trades. Understanding chart reading of gaps and how important the patterns of price are in the market will assist you in being profitable. And that's what everyone's after. Trading gaps is a quality strategy because gaps are created by institutional money, hedge funds, banks, the big money players. That one company, I'm not going to name it, that one company today that was just fined $23 billion? Now they're trying to overturn it. They were fined $23 billion. What if they have to pay it? Will they go under? No. No, they won't. No, they won't. They won't. That just shows you how much money these companies have. Okay? So trading with the side of institutions helps you. It helps you understand what you're supposed to be doing. And knowing this helps give you gives you conviction to trade and take the risk that you need to make to make the profits, which is an advanced risk if you can get to the point where you can get there. Trading gaps is a powerful strategy, and this is how professionals trade. You can use a sophisticated level of price information to enter trades and take sizable positions. Taking sizable positions will help you attain the income level you dream of, whatever it is. And the most important thing is that reading gaps is a skill you can learn. It is a skill you can learn. I've had people ask me this. They say, can I learn it? Of course you can learn it. If I'm new, if I never traded before, can I learn it? Yes. If I've been trading in the wrong way for years and I've been losing, can I learn how to do this? Yes, you can learn it. The 26-point checklist makes you focus on the right information. And if you follow the system, you're going to learn it and you're going to do it. Okay? Reading gaps correctly is a skill. It's a skill that you can learn. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. It is not about getting 26 or 26 points. It's about getting a high rating. If it is, you do it. If it's not, you don't do it. Some days you may not take a trade. The course also teaches you what direction to trade the stock on the live day. And the course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So why would you even consider if you want to maybe take the class? And if you do email me, uh, Kathy has my email in the room there. The class is this weekend. Why take it? To learn a strategy that you can use to make money in the U.S. stock market, a great market to trade. Many other markets are, uh, do not have as much momentum and volatility and opportunity as the U.S. market, which is also regulated, which is a plus. To learn a strategy that offers momentum moves in stocks each day, again, great reason to trade it. To learn how to trade gaps, to learn how to read charts with advanced technical analysis, to learn a strategy that is profitable on multiple time frames, 
because you could play it for a longer term. To learn how to read stock charts and price patterns, which is how you're going to make money, and to learn how to pick which symbol to trade in the day because you want to have the same circle every day. If you're doing a different thing all the time, it's going to be hard for you to make money consistently over the long haul or to become a, ever a career trader. To learn how to enter the stock and determine the targets, very important. I teach this in the class. And not only that, to learn a new career that you can do from home. If this is one of the reasons you're doing this, you know, if you want to get out of your full-time job, if you're tired of it, tired of the rat race, tired of the commute, tired of the hours, or, or getting older, and you just want to do something different, trading is a possibility. The Golden Gap course teaches one solid strategy, teaches multiple entries and plays. It teaches you how to trade the open. It teaches you how to book money intraday in stocks. It teaches advanced chart reading skills. And it teaches you how to get conviction in your trading and the market as a source of wealth. So think about it. The class is this weekend. You can take a class and educate yourself to become a better trader. If you want to do well, you will want to educate yourself. Because in the bigger picture is where you need to be looking. Now, Charles has a question here before I continue. I don't have any software programs at all, Charles, to help me find gaps. I do everything manually. I'm so old-fashioned. <laughs> but you could buy one. You could get a scanner, sure. One important key factor in becoming a successful trader is keeping in mind the bigger picture while living in the now. This is the challenge. I mean, I get it, okay? Because I was there six years ago when I started to trade. You want to make money right now, but you're just learning, and you're thinking about where you want to be, and yet you're living on the day, and you've got to find a trade right now, and you want to make money today, but then in the long haul, you really want to be successful, so you want to do the right thing. You can live in the now with your daily trading decisions, but keep the bigger picture in mind of where you want to go and who you want to become as a trader. You can. You can. I'm doing it. And I'm teaching people to do it, too. And I understand the challenges out there of doing that, but you must, because if you don't, you won't make it. Okay? If you do not keep the bigger picture in mind, the market will consume your daily thoughts, and you will never reach the bigger picture goal, which is that you want to be successful, you want to make real money, you only want to work for a few hours a day, you want to quit your day job, and you want to have the potential to have unlimited income. So you've got to keep that bigger picture in mind, which means keeping yourself out of bad trades, not doing the wrong things, not having the crazy, hectic behavior. Trading is a career choice and a lifestyle choice in the bigger picture, and you've got to keep that in mind. And don't get consumed with what you're doing in any one single trade. Many traders forget about this in their day-to-day -day activities. But the fact is that trading in the bigger picture is a career choice. And I don't care if you're doing this for a full-time job or a part-time job. It still is something you have to take seriously. So where do you see yourself in a year and five years from now? In ten years from now, it seems like a long time away. But you know what? Hey, you got to plan for the future. Is that too far off to consider? The answer is no. Time really flies. And as every year passes, I'm like, geez, I can't, I can't do enough to plan for my future. Half the calendar year is over. If you've been thinking about learning how to trade for six months or a year, you've already lost that time. You've already lost that time. It's gone. It's gone. Every moment you live, you have a choice to do something, to change your future, or you have a choice to do nothing. Doing nothing is actually a choice. You think you're not making a choice by not taking a class or not learning how to train or not doing the right thing for yourself financially or staying in the job that you have right now even if you hate it. You think you're not doing anything, but you are. You are making a choice. You are making a choice to stay in the status quo and to not do something to change your life. So you are making a choice. Make the right choice to improve your life, to improve your finances, to improve your training, to do something to better yourself because time keeps ticking. So you got to ask yourself, do you have a plan? You think you're not making a choice by doing nothing, but doing nothing is a choice. And it's certainly not the right choice, in my opinion, if you want to move forward in your life. It is July 21st. It's in less than six months, it's going to be 2015. Time keeps moving, okay? What is your retirement plan? What is your retirement plan? Your Social Security, which probably is going to be gone by the time I'm ready to retire, okay? A pension? Now they're thinking about getting rid of pensions. Companies now are going to get rid of pensions. They've been talking about it. Now they're going to just completely get rid of pensions. So you're waiting for Social Security. It's not going to be there. You think you're going to rely on your pension. Now companies want to do away with pensions. What, what's your retirement plan? The money market or savings account that you're making 0.000001% in? 
If you sat and let it make 0.001% by the time you retire, it's still not going to be enough, okay? Traders tend to be too short-sighted. A lot of people I've talked to since I've talked to people, since I've had the business, and friends I know as well in the business, and friend traders I have too, they're too short-sighted. There's very few traders I know personally that are not short-sighted. It's just a general thing. I don't know why. I think it's the excitement of the market and we want to make money right now. And you can make money right now. That's true. You can. You could have done any of those trades I just went over in the last week and made money. You could have shorted Matt today and made money. And I did. But the reality is you got to keep the bigger picture in mind. And this is no more important than ever than at the beginning. And by the way, even after you're doing it and you're successful like me, you still have to not be too short-sighted. Because there's days that I get up and I want to trade and I want to do something and it doesn't meet my criteria. And then I have to remind myself, woo, I have to stay together. You know, okay? You can't be too short-sighted. If you do, you're never going to reach your goals. And if you're already reached your goals, you're never going to reach the next goal. Okay, because we all have goals. I still have goals. And then I have bigger goals. And then I have other goals. And you always have goals and you're constantly, constantly changing them. If you want to be wealthy, you need a plan of action. Unless you're born into money or win the lottery, no one becomes wealthy overnight. If becoming wealthy is one of your goals, and if it is, okay, and if it's fine if it is, and if it's one of the reasons you want to trade, then you need a plan of action. Every trader should have a trading plan they follow. But a plan of action is more than a trading plan. A plan of action sets your course to achieve your goals, and it's down on paper. First things first, decide if you want to trade, and then decide why, and then decide how much do you want to make trading? And then, how are you going to get there? You need a plan of action. Take the Golden Gap course and learn how to trade gaps and read them. Learn how to trade in a demo for a month if you need that long, or a week. Start trading a live account, risking beginner risk. Then you move to intermediate, then you move to advanced. Whether you do it as a day trade, a swing trade, or a core trade, or an option trade, it's up to you. And you need to know how much money you want to make. You have to have a plan of action in place to achieve your desired monetary monthly goal. You're talking about monthly on a quarterly basis for the first year. So I'd say for the first year, you're looking at everything quarterly. And then after that, you can look at everything annually for your goals, okay? After the first year. Once you reach your annual trader's income goal, then you've got a lot of choices. You could keep risking more money. You could do day trades and swing trades and overnights. You could even look at that experience doing things in both directions. If you get good in one direction, I mean, there's so many different things you could do. Maybe someone, you could get a good job working for a hedge fund. There's so many options. People ask me, can you make millions of dollars trading? Can you? Is it possible? Can you do it? You, you can. I mean, I have made some million dollar calls. And I will make more, okay? And Netflix was one of them, okay? I called the gap on Netflix before it happened, before it gapped up. And then I called it as a long, and traders were looking to short it. This, is, this was back at the beginning of 2013. And this is a million-dollar call. I can't tell you how many times in my mind I've gone over, I did not take this overnight, but I called it. Since I've done this, how many times I've, in my mind, seen that I could have just taken 1,000 shares of this. 1,000 shares of this is all I would have needed to take. It would have made over 350 grand. And I would still be in it. And the end of the year target actually for Netflix is around 700 something. Could get to 750. And that was a million dollar call. And I made it. So, you know, could you become mil a millionaire at trading gaps? Yes. Will I? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, people always say, well, why do you teach? I teach because it's fun and I like it. I teach because I make money teaching. I teach because I have something good and people want it and I can. But I got to tell you, that teaching actually has helped me become a better trader. It's helped to strengthen my own level of conviction. And I won't be teaching forever because eventually I will be making millions and millions and billions of dollars trading and I won't have any time or inclination to teach at all. So if you really do want to learn how to do this from me, the, the, the time is now. You can wait six months, you can wait a year, you can wait till you want, you can wait till I'm not doing it anymore. But know that choosing not to learn how to trade is still a choice. Okay. Anyways, trading is really a lifestyle choice. You've got to give yourself an edge with the stock swish gap strategy. Institutions have billions, don't forget it, to so learn how to trade on their side. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a complete system to use how to trade. And 
It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place socks at our professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's July 26th and 27th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The cost of the class is $2,999 in U.S. dollars. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com for more information. I am running a special for July. All new students of the Golden Gap course in July receive the Wealth Manifestation course free. This is a great class, by the way. It's a really good class, and the date for this is July 31st. This is $3.99 on its own. It's from 12 to 3 on this date. So if you do the Gap class this weekend, you will get this class for free. So it's an extra bonus there, $400, and it's a great course. I also teach another class called the Trends course. This is in July as well. It's July 29th and 30th from 12 to 5. Cost of this class alone is $9.99. This is a course on how to read trends in stock charts for longer term. This is more geared towards longer term traders, swing traders, core traders. Although if you're a day trader, I will tell you if you want to day trade, this opens up your eyes to how to look to things at a bigger time frame. And it really can strengthen your day trading outlook. And I'm doing a special for July since I'm doing these classes this month. You can do all three classes for one price, which is $3499, $3499. So I'm offering half off the trends class with the gap class, the wealth class for free. It's a savings of almost $900. This is a really good deal. You get the whole shebang already, have people sign up for it. This is a strong way to go into August and then the fall of this year to learn how to trade and to start to trade. Because you could take the classes in July, practice at the end of July and practice at the beginning of August, and then go into the fall, you know, knowing all this information about trends and gaps and having a good basis for trading psychology, which you get in the Wealth Manifestation class. So email me if you're interested at melissa at thestockswish.com. Remember, it is about you. It is about you. It is about you empowering yourself. You've got to empower yourself today with information because you don't know what tomorrow brings. You've got to find a way to live in the now and plan for the bigger picture. That's what the goal is for everyone. Being a trader in the summer, i got to tell you, though, is a really fun job. To have every afternoon free and not have to worry about, uh, you know, missing the days. And remember, your path to success is a Golden Gap class. Thanks so much for coming, anyone. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions at all? Charles was a plethora of questions today. Does anyone else have any questions? Well, you can feel free to email me if you have questions at melissaatthestockswish.com. You can watch CMG and Netflix for tomorrow. And I'm going to look for my short picks tonight because I like to short, as you know. There were some things that were I was watching tonight for shorts. Wonderful. You're welcome. All right, thanks so much. Thank you, OnlineTraderCentral.com, for having me. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. I know it's a beautiful, gorgeous Monday evening. Relax, enjoy your night. Go out and have a good time. You're welcome. Email me if you'd like more information. Have a good one. Thanks, everybody. Everyone again, thank you for your time and your participation. Please take advantage of Melissa's offer. The website um, 